Tonight's big stories and tomorrow's forecast from the region's most watched news team. This is WDBJ 7 at 10 on WZBJ 24. Tonight at 10, more people will soon get the chance to roll up their sleeves for a COVID-19 vaccine. We'll tell you who is moving into phase 1B in just a few days. Plus, a West Virginia lawmaker is stepping down following Wednesday's riot on Capitol Hill. Details on the federal charges he's now facing. Cool and quiet weather continues through the weekend. Could more winter weather be on our way next week? A forecast coming up. Good evening, I'm Kate Capitano. Thank you for joining us. Our top story tonight, more people in our hometowns will soon be allowed to get a COVID-19 vaccine. Starting Monday, a handful of health districts will begin phase 1B vaccinations. That group includes essential workers and folks 75 years and older. WDBJ 7's Lindsay Kane tells us eligible people will need to pre-register to get their shot. This really is the potential turning point in this um, just terrible pandemic. It's so exciting to know that we finally have a tool that can make a difference. On Monday, COVID-19 immunity will begin for many in the New River Valley and Roanoke and Allegheny Health Districts as more vaccines are given out. There are literally hundreds of thousands of people in the phase 1B category in Virginia. It is going to take us time. And so we really need for people to understand that we need patience, we need flexibility. For essential workers included in phase 1B of the vaccine rollout plan, the next question is how to get the vaccine. Health officials say you can get the vaccine through your workplace clinic or residential clinic. But for that to happen, you need to pre-register and make an appointment through your clinics. If you identify as phase 1B and work at a smaller or independent business, are 75 or older, or are not affiliated with a workplace or residential clinic, you can pre-register through the health district websites. All of the clinics are closed clinics, meaning that they will not be open to walk-ins. Once you pre-register, the Virginia Department of Health will contact you to make an appointment at a local health department or health care provider. Within Phase 1B, there are priorities, and law enforcement and first responders are at the top of the list. Health officials say that pre-registration does not guarantee you'll get an appointment. Because it is our responsibility to try to make sure that we are distributing that the vaccine in accordance to the prioritization strategies. Health officials say if you're in phase 1C or the general public, you should not pre-register. Lindsay Kane, WDBJ7. 5,700 new coronavirus cases were reported here in Virginia as of this morning. That means there have been nearly 394,000 infections since the pandemic began. The percent positivity rate is at 16.7%. More than 3,000 people are battling COVID from a hospital bed this weekend. And across Virginia, more than 156,000 people have gotten at least one dose of a COVID-19 vaccine. Right here in our hometowns, COVID, vac COVID cases have gone up by more than 1,000 overnight. The health department is also reporting 15 new deaths in our region, bringing the total to 950. Across America, COVID-19 cases are climbing and now the government is keeping a close eye on a new variant of the virus. The White House Coronavirus Task Force says a new mutation of the virus could be adding to the current spike in infections. However, the CDC says there's no evidence of that at this time. Meanwhile, the nation's top infectious disease experts say they're watching the changes closely to make sure vaccines remain effective. If anything changes, then we will be able to make a modification in the vaccine. But right now, the data indicate that the UK mutant is still quite sensitive to the antibodies that are induced by the vaccine. The CDC is reporting that much of the country is behind on vaccine efforts. The states in yellow have administered less than a quarter of their vaccine supplies. You can see Virginia is one of those states highlighted. Now that the COVID vaccine is starting to be distributed, some will be looking to take advantage of you. The Valley Program for Aging Services says vulnerable older adults will be targeted the most. There's no wait list or early access to a vaccine. The director of the VPA is taking a proactive approach to preventing scams to keep the community safe. 
If you believe you are getting scammed, there's a few things you should do. The very first thing you should do if you find yourself in this situation is hang up the phone, shut the door, and it um, wouldn't be a bad idea to notify your local law enforcement and just let them know that you're getting these scams. And then that way they can inform other people in the community. Bland says she wants everyone to be safe from potential scammers and emphasize that you should never give out any personal information over the phone. Turning now to your hometown forecast, the sunshine and mild temperatures melted most of the snow in Grandin Village today and made for a pleasant afternoon to go out on a walk. Ian, I know a lot of people are probably going to want to get outside again tomorrow. What do they need to know before they head out? It looks real good tomorrow. Honestly, this is a great weekend here just after a very soggy or rather snowy end to the week. We're going to see some quiet weather tomorrow and possibly more of that early on this week. Really depends on how a system plays out. We'll get on that uh, coming up, but Roanoke and Blacksburg are quiet with clear skies tonight and that's going to allow those temperatures to drop. So Blacksburg still has a nice layer of snow on the ground. Roanoke, much of that snow has melted. We saw about an inch of snow in the city. Currently, temperatures stand at 33 degrees in Roanoke, 37 degrees in Danville. We're 28 degrees in Blacksburg. I expect temperatures to dip into the upper teens to the west and low 20s. It will be a very chilly start to your Sunday. But we have high pressure overhead. That is going to allow for more quiet weather tomorrow. Really not expecting much of a change to that. It isn't until later on this upcoming week where we might see our next system move in. But for tomorrow, temperatures start out in the 20s, but warm to near 50 degrees with sunshine tomorrow afternoon. And then temperatures are expected to be fairly cool into the upcoming weeks, milder days, but we may have some big changes on the way. I'll have a full look at this forecast coming up. Fourth graders at Roanoke County Public Schools will be returning to full time in person instruction. Students will be welcomed back five days a week starting January 25th to make sure everything is set for their return. Fourth grade classes will be 100% online on January 21st and 22nd. Students receiving 100% online instruction will have the option to switch to full-time in-person instruction or continue with their class virtually. Other students in 5th to 12th grade may also be eligible for more in-person education. All that information is on our website. Rallies continue across the country this weekend after the violence in the U.S. Capitol on Wednesday. Heavily armed supporters of President Trump gathered in Minneapolis for a Stop the Steal protest. Meanwhile, anti-Trump demonstrators protested in Chicago, New York, and several other cities. Democrats are prepared to bring articles of impeachment against President Trump. However, Republicans don't think there is enough time for that process. Since running the executive branch is a deranged unhinged, dangerous president of the United States. I've got enough decisions to make about things that can happen rather than to spend time on things that can't happen. The Justice Department continues to pursue charges in connection with the assault on the Capitol using photos like these as evidence. A West Virginia lawmaker has resigned after he was arrested on two federal charges following the riot in Washington, D.C. this week. Derek Evans was on Capitol Hill Wednesday and appeared before a federal court yesterday. Authorities used a video Evans live streamed on Facebook as evidence to charge him with entering a restricted area and disorderly conduct. Evans' attorney says those posts show him documenting the events of the day. Whether or not he committed a crime that day is between him and the District of Columbia. You know, he was walking around filming. That's all he's alleged to, to have been doing. That's all the video shows him doing. This morning, Evans submitted his letter of resignation to Governor Jim Justice. Evans says he deeply regretted any pain or embarrassment he may have caused. In Harrisonburg today, a protest took place outside of Congressman Ben Klein's office. Protesters say he should have disavowed the events on Capitol Hill Wednesday and changed his vote to authorize Biden as the president-elect. In a tweet on Wednesday, Klein says, While Americans have the right to protest, violence is never the answer and condemn the actions of those protesting. Once the insurrection happened on Wednesday, it went too far. I mean, I don't care whether you're Republican or Democrat. It was an insult to our integrity of our country. 
Protesters here claim Klein has been supporting President Trump's harmful rhetoric for years and needs to look at the, quote, damage he has done. The Charlottesville Track Club held its annual New Year's 5K this morning at Foxfield Track, and it's safe to say it looked a lot different from previous years. For one, the race had to be rescheduled from New Year's Day to today because of bad weather. The biggest change, runners were assigned a time slot to start the race instead of starting altogether. Masks had to be worn at all times except when crossing the starting line. It's working well. People are getting used to it. Um, they actually like it a little better because in a mass start, you get pulled out fast and slower all together. You know, you get to the mile mark and go, whoa, that was a little too quick. Here you can gauge your own pace. It's very personal. Proceeds from this race will go to an organization that helps the homeless in Charlottesville. Coming up tonight in Trending at 10, NASA wants to know the secrets of the universe, what new program the space agency is putting together. And later, almost three years ago, a deputy saved a little girl's life. Hear how she's doing today.